Talks. This is Open Mike, and we are back here again with you. This is the sixth episode of the show, Open Mike, and the feedback has been positive as to the level of our discussions. We implore many St. Lucians to continue turning into our program as we strive to both maintain and improve the substance offered. Today, we have with us two successful individuals. <clears throat> Mr. Stenor Blestang, CPA, CA, CFA, was an island scholar who had four years experience with KPMG and presently is the executive director of Bay Gardens Beach Resort and Bay Gardens Hotels. Mr. Destang has virtually changed the fortunes of his hotel with technology. Mr. Conrad Wagner, on the other hand, was trained within the hotel industry in Europe and who worked with Sanders Resort in Jamaica and St. Lucia for over 20 years. Mr. Wagner has a wealth of experience in the industry and has been nothing but a plus to St. Lucia since his arrival on the island. Today, the important, we, the, we have a number of items to discuss. I doubt whether we can get through the whole list, but we will attempt to do so. The importance, the first item in the program is the importance of replenishing our foreign exchange on a continuous basis based on the synergies which depend on foreign exchange. I will take the a liberty to first advise the public how this works. Um, the tourism industry represents between 60 and 75 percent of the foreign exchange brought into this country. And for those of us not fully aware of what foreign exchange can do, Without foreign exchange, we can buy nothing on this island because the foreign exchange goes into the ECCB into cent kits and that's what maintains the strength of the EC dollar, which has stood firm for the last 45 to 50 years because of the foreign exchange. Therefore, we implore all St. Lucians who are now aware of what is going on to ensure that the tourism industry stays, stays strong because without the foreign exchange, we will be in deep trouble. Now, just to, f to mention to the public, we can buy nothing. Take our medication. We don't produce medicines on the island. And without the foreign exchange, we are dead. So please, try to understand that. Discuss it with your friends. And don't be afraid to send us an email if you have any further questions, because your questions mean a lot to us. At this point in time, I wish to go to the second agenda, which is the various dependencies that owe their existence and survival from tourism. And I'll ask Mr. Destin to handle that. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Shastny. And I just want to start by um, thanking you for um, having us once again um, on the show to discuss the importance of tourism to the, um, to the St. Lucian economy. Um, I actually like what you said about imploring all St. Lucians um, to understand the importance of tourism and to do their part because um, tourism is not just about the hotels and it's not just about um, the restaurants. Um, tourism impacts everybody um, on island. It impacts all sectors. Everybody is very, very dependent on tourism um, and its success. And um, we had our staff awards um, quite recently at Bay Gardens Resorts. And in my opening remarks, I mentioned um, to, we had a few um, persons from the public sector there. And I mentioned that um, these persons who are there, the individual team members we have at Bay Gardens Resorts and in the tourism industry, form the backbone of the industry that is the um, heart, the lifeblood of our economy. And these are the individuals who will um, help us to pull, out of, to pull us out of the um, position that we're in right now. Um, from a fiscal standpoint and from an economic standpoint. It really is up to all of us um, to ensure the survival of our tourism product. Um, in terms of the dependencies and, and, and how tourism um, trickles down, there's perhaps a lot that we can do um, to improve upon that, but there, there's no doubt that tourism um, drives the economy and drives every single sector. Um, you know, there are a lot of businesses that, that depend on it in um, manufacturing, in the banking sector, the retail sector. And you know, the question they have to ask themselves, if there was no tourism in St. Lucia and if it, the product wasn't thriving, where would I be? And I think a lot of them do realize that and I wish sometimes that they'd come to the forefront a little bit more and, and, and mention that because um, all of these sectors depend so heavily um, on tourism and included in that is the agricultural sector. 
Um, you know, I, I don't think it's the, the, the whole concept of linkages and improving the linkages between tourism and, and the rest of the economy comes up so often. And unfortunately, it, it's just lip services played to it a, a lot of the time. But the agricultural sector, as I mentioned last week, has a several million dollar opportunity. Um, people don't come to St. Lucia to eat apples and grapes and the same things that they get in England and the US and Canada. They, they don't come for that. Um, they want that because they want the comfort of, of what they know from home, but they also want to experience what's new and what's local. And, and sometimes I, I just shudder to think of um, what I would tell a guest if I had to truthfully answer to them, how many of the fruits on the buffet are local, truly local, as opposed to imported? Because the fact of the matter is we're importing a tremendous amount of cantaloupe, honeydew, watermelon, and pineapple. I think I mentioned that last week. You did. Um, just, we, just us at Bay, at Bay Gardens Resorts, we spend about a quarter million importing these, not directly. We, we don't you know, import, and I don't think any hotel really wants to be in the business of importing produce if they don't have to. But you know, we import it indirectly through a supplier who, who is importing it. And it's amazing how many suppliers are having to import these things because enough of it is not being produced um, locally. So that's a quarter million dollar opportunity right there with mm -hmm. us. And with the broader sector, you're talking a few million dollars that the farmers are, are leaving on the table. Now, in defense of the farmers, I know that they've also um, had some concerns um, from the hotel side, um, with some of them, um, you know, being concerned about prompt payment and so on. But you know, I think it's important that the public understand that you can't paint all of the hotels on the same broad brush. Um, at Bay Gardens Resorts, at several other hotels, our farmers are paid within a matter of days, and and sometimes within um, two to three weeks. So we pay the farmers um, very promptly because we understand the importance of it. Um, for, of their cash flow. And I think it's also important to understand that not every single guest who's in a hotel is necessarily paid for. They might have paid for their vacation, but the hotel may not have been paid That's for right, it as yet yeah. because what, 60 of man, of our yeah. book of bookings right. come from a middleman who sometimes will stretch you out with, with regards to payment for 60 days uh, as much as that, an average of 30 to 60 days. So at any given time, we as a small hotel have several hundred thousand outstanding and receivables from tour operators and travel agencies. Um, but that notwithstanding, um, you know, the farmers are certainly not in a position to wait that long. So um, we recently um, concluded um, a, a meeting with the St. Lucia Development Bank. Mm -hmm. And we're right now trying to, um, this is us talking on behalf of the SLHTA yes. um, and the Development Bank, which mm -hmm. I, I also sit on the board of the Development Bank. So we're trying to um, take advantage of that natural link and relationship and create a, a financing product for farmers that should um, help them um, using a form of receivables financing that would allow them to be paid by the development bank mm -hmm. um, within a matter of days um, as opposed to having to wait weeks or in some case months to, for payment from hotels. Um, it would also reduce the administrative burden on the hotels because right. they would now have to just pay the development bank instead of having to deal with 20 to 30 individual farmers that makes a lot of and sense. Uh, of course the development bank would would benefit um, from a financing fee which would be significantly below I what exists in the market yeah. yeah and it, it's something that we're in the pilot stages um, mm. we've got um, support from hotels who represent about a quarter of the rooms on island right now who mm. are willing to take part and we just want to start a pilot project with it um, see how it goes we're hoping to start by um, May, June, and I think it's been described by um, persons in the sector, by some farmers and some of the staff at the Development Bank as a groundbreaking. If we can finally get this off the ground, because it's been talked about for many years, mm -hmm. um, it would really um, thaw the, the relationship, I think, that exists between the agricultural sector and, and tourism yeah, you're tremendously. So, yeah, you're so right in that, because I remember at CFL some five or six years ago, we implemented such a program where we put aside a million dollars um, for the farmers. And whenever they wanted any equipment, you know, because as you say, these guys, they literally live from hand to mouth. Yes. And it's so difficult for them. And if they want a pump for $500 or something, we'll lend them the $500. And when they bring in their fruit, we deduct it for them on a, on a regular basis. Yes. And uh, that worked well. So I think your idea of the development bank is a wonderful idea. Yes, and well, I thank you. Well, it's it's, it's not my that. idea, though, because this is well, an idea that's been on the table it. for 
a long time. I think what's happened is you've got a renewed energy yes. to make it happen That's within fantastic. a short space mm -hmm. of time. And uh, and I think it's a, an, an example of the private sector helping itself yeah. um, as well because you know it's in the past you know we've had to rely on um, government and the ministry, and you will need that yeah. when it grows. Mm -hmm. But for a pilot project, um, there's no reason why the farmers, the development bank, and the hotels can't get together and make it happen. And yeah. Um, yeah. I see it as something that is going I, to happen I, I very think, soon. Um, and, and if I may say so, I think it's also, um, it's probably a really good opportunity to use some of this development fund that the hotels voluntarily contribute every month yeah. to maybe help um, the farmers to to learn better to, to manage the finances. Yes. Maybe by, by allowing the, the credit facilities now and the faster payment Maybe some of our own funds can be used for educational purposes Absolutely. to help the farmers to manage um, how the money comes in and out. Because yeah. often people think cash in the pocket is profit, and that I naturally know. is not. And that's when your problem comes in. That's right. When you say, "Boss, can I pay you next month?" Yeah. So maybe we can use some of the hotel association funds and tools at the same yeah. time the public relations. Yeah, and you're outreach. referring, of course, to the tourism enhancement fund. Correct. Um, this is a voluntary fund um, which has just started in October. Um, basically, um, for viewers who are not aware, we since October, the um, Hotel Association um, started a Tourism Enhancement Fund, um, whereby we ask guests to voluntarily contribute $2 um, yes, a night. Yes, I remember you so, that. I mean, Two US dollars, that is. Two US dollars, of course. So, um, the average stay is about seven to ten nights, depending on the market. So, the average guest is putting out $20, but with 300,000 arrivals mm -hmm. um, and, and, and so on, it, it adds up and it's pacing very, very nicely. Yes. And you know, we've been able to put the um, tourism enhancement funds, um, funds to good use. The first thing we did actually was um, assisted in the relief after the um, Christmas Eve trough and helped the, to get the Canaries infant school back up and running within right. a very short space of time. Um, and there are several other um, public-private um, partnership projects that we're um, in the process of doing in fields from marketing for small hotels, um, training and development, and um, the, also the um, program of the Development Bank, which we are actually going to be, um, we've committed to provide some of the seed capital for um, as well. Now, uh, without breaking your trend of thought, um, it's always not on my agenda. I saw it last night and last couple of days. It's a bit worrying to me. Um, with Wasco and the water situation. That's right. You know, we all know for the longest while that 30% of the dam is filled with, with mud mm -hmm. and that has reduced the capacity. Now, I am a bit concerned because uh, the, if we are not able to get the water as we want, that creates a, a serious problem for us. Now, while we're on the subject of the, the development bank, I know maybe that may be uh, beyond their, their capabilities, mm -hmm. but you know, I think the SLHTA needs to get um, out there very quickly because the dry season is coming it's on. Coming on yes. And you know, I'll tell you something, without the water situation, A, if we don't have the water and the cost of bringing in water is astronomical and this will knock down our earnings tremendously. Um, what advice would you give at this point or suggestions? Well, I think it's something that we really need to pay attention to because we, you know, 2010, you know, they, they always say don't um, waste any good crisis, don't waste the opportunity presented by yes. a good crisis. And mm -hmm. we, we wasted two opportunities. We had a drought and then we had Thomas in the same year. And you know, there was a lot of discussion about what needs to be done. Um, you know, everything from, um, of course, desilting the dam. We spoke about um, uh, um, water, getting water from other sources. Um, I'm sorry, the, the name of it is not coming to me. Yeah. Um, but getting water from the oh, so desalination, yeah. plants. desalination plants. So all of these were discussed, but yeah. it never went anywhere. Can, can I ask you a question, Sanab? It is something that has drawn, because I always find when you can't reach at a solution, there are other solutions, what we call a plan B. Right. Um, I have advocated that somewhere up north, since all the hotels are up north, they have, we have these tanks in the, in the UK, uh, we have them, uh, ours are like 50,000 gallons. Right. They make them up to 500,000 gallons. Mm -hmm. I thought, you know, that if they could say, I'm just calling a number, say 10, 500,000 gallons, you put it somewhere in the Rodney Bay area, say we're close to Cap Estate, that's fairly central, mm -hmm. okay? Now, are you aware, of course, most of us are aware that in the wet season, you have an overflow of water going over the barrier, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's actually wasted. So if this water, say, pumped into that station um, on a regular basis, 
and have those tanks filled. If you have a hurricane or something, whatever it is, you know, we have two weeks lead time before the pipes are unclogged right. so that we can keep on going. Because as I said when I started the program, this is our foreign exchange and employment agency. That is the hotel industry. And we must get this thing across to the public, come hell or high water. Because many people still feel that government are uh, soft peddling with the hotels, that they're getting all the concessions. They don't understand here. Building a hotel is an expensive venture. Extremely. You're in the hotel business. You're in the hotel business. Yes. You know what it's all about. It's, a very, it's sensitive in the sense that it's people coming, but it's still the fastest growing industry in the world. This is the end of our first segment. We must take a break. This is Oak Mike. We'll be right back.